Hey folks, uh, today we're going to talk about torque as a vector. Now we've already talked about torque quite a bit, um, but we have skipped one thing that's important about torque. And this, this idea is going to lead into uh, angular momentum and rolling and so on. And that is the direction of torque. Now for the most part, we've been talking about uh, clockwise or counterclockwise with torque. Well, it turns out that's, that's one way to describe it, but there's actually a more succinct way to describe it that's actually a, a vector direction. Now, um, to start off with, I, I wrote over on the side here a review of something called dot product that we talked about when we talked about work and energy. And um, it's, I'm going to compare and contrast this new thing with dot product. So it's good to remember what dot product is. So dot product is simply a measure of how parallel two vectors are. And when you dot product two vectors, the, the, the answer is, is the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times cosine of the angle between them. So for instance, if, they're, if the two vectors are in the exact same direction, uh, the angle is zero and cosine of zero is one, that's the maximum cosine gets. So that's your max dot product, et cetera. So what about torque? Okay, well, torque is not a dot product, all right? It is a cross product. It is how perpendicular the two vectors are. So for instance, let's say I have a vector and here is a, here it is. Let's say that's your R and let's say you apply a force here. Okay. Well, as we've already talked about, the more perpendicular the force is to the radius, the better, the more torque you get. So it turns out that that is vector cross product. And the um, equation for cross product looks like this. And I'll write this out. So this is cross product. Okay. And cross product simply looks like this. A cross B. So it's all, like dot product. It's kind of a way of multiplying, but not exactly. Okay. We'll, we'll talk about that as we go. And this equals uh, the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B, well, what trig function would be a maximum when uh, the angle is 90 degrees, when the two vectors are exactly perpendicular to each other? Well, instead of cosine, it is sine of the angle, okay? Now, it also turns out that the answer to this, whether you do the left side or the right side, it turns out that um, the answer is also a vector, which I'll talk about. Now, before we, we do any examples and try to use this stuff, we need to talk about direction really quick. So um, this is hard when you're not in person, okay? So I'm going to do the best I can on the computer here. So let's say we have a three-dimensional coordinate system in your room, or, and let's say we're looking at the page. So let's say that to the right is our i-hat direction, our x direction. Um, up the page is the j-hat direction, and then k direction would be up out of the page, so like coming out toward you. So how we draw that is we draw a dot, and that's k hat, okay? You might recall that for direction, a dot means out of the page, and an x means into the page, okay? So in this coordinate system, i is to the right, j is up, up the page, and k is out of the page toward us, okay? Well, we're going to do something called the right-hand rule, okay, to talk about direction. So right-hand rule. Now, as the, as the name implies, you have to use your right hand. Sorry, lefties, okay? So, but here's how it works. Uh, for the first vector, you, you point your fingers in the direction of the first vector, and you, you have your hand straight. So imagine your hand is like a drill and you can rotate your hand clockwise or counterclockwise while your fingers and your, your hand is all straight. Like you, I imagine my whole arm and everything being straight, like one, one karate chop uh, straight. But you're allowed to rotate your, your hand um, clockwise and counterclockwise. Okay. And then what you do is you curl your fingers in the direction of the second vector. Okay, so, um, and then your thumb is the answer. Your thumb is the answer vector. 
Oh, I can't spell. Okay, so let me, let, I want you guys to try this out on your page right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to try I cross J direction. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your hands and you're going to point your hand on the page in the direction of I. So your hand should be pointing to the right. And then you curl your fingers in the direction of J. So you rotate your hand until you're able to curl your fingers up the page. And then you stick your thumb out like a hitchhiker. And if you're doing this right, right now your thumb should be pointing directly at you out of the page. Okay, so when you do I cross J, that is in the K hat direction. Okay, now just for kicks, we're going to do J cross I and see what direction that is. So now you're going to stick your fingers, so your hand is, your karate chop is pointing up the page. You're going to have to rotate your right hand until you're able to curl your fingers to the right. Okay. And if you're doing this right, when you stick your thumb out, it should now be pointing into the page, which is the negative K direction. Okay. All right, let's try another one. Let's try J cross K. Okay. So for J cross K, you stick your fingers up, your karate chop points up, and you're going to rotate your hand until your fingers are able to curl out of the page. And then you stick your thumb out. And if you're doing this right, your thumb should point to the right along the J hat direction. Oh, I'm sorry, along the I hat direction. Okay. Now let's try K cross J. Okay. So now you're going to start with your fingers pointing directly at your face, out the page at you. And you're going to rotate your hand. This is a little awkward. I'm having to kind of bend my arm around a little bit. But I'm having I'm rotating my hand until I'm able to curl my fingers up the page. And if you stick your thumb out, your finger your thumb should point to the left, which is the negative I hat direction. So hopefully you're seeing a rule here, right? If you do I cross J, you get positive K. If you do J cross I, you get negative K. So if you reverse the order in which you do your cross product, you get the opposite direction. Okay. The last one is interesting though. We're gonna do I cross K. Okay. And um, let's try that out. So you, you, you point your karate chop hand to the right. And you wrote, and I, again, my, right now my arm is really awkward. Uh, I'm having to rotate my arm until my fingers point out of the page. Okay. And if you do that and stick your thumb out, your thumb should point down. So this is the negative J hat direction. Okay. And if we do create K cross I, okay. So if you do K cross I, if you point, start with your karate chop pointing out of the page and you curl your fingers to the right, your thumb should point up, which it does. And that's positive J direction. OK, so um, those are the directions of um, vector cross product. And that's actually important to know. OK, so now this is one where if I ever see you in person or on a Zoom, uh, this is one that would be very helpful to possibly for us to go through together, okay? If you're able to kind of follow my words and do this stuff with your hand, then, then you're in good shape, okay? Now, what does that mean, okay? What does all this mean, okay? So we've got one example to do with you for now. So let's say I've got uh, the following. Let's say I've got a, a, uh, a rod and it's pinned here so we can rotate it clockwise and counterclockwise. And let's say I apply a force here to it and um, this angle here I'm giving you, and I'm going to give you numbers for all this. So let's say R is 10 meters, um, and it's going to be this angle down here is going to be at 50 degrees. So if I write R in unit vector notation, by the way, that would be 6.43 I hat plus 7.66 J hat meters. Okay, so I'm just writing that in unit vector notation. Let's say the force is negative 4J newtons. That's why it's pointing down, okay? If we do R cross F, okay, let's start with the direction, okay? So by the way, the torque is R cross F, and that torque is going to have a direction. Now, what we've been saying is we've been saying, okay, that'll be clockwise. 
Well, it turns out that it's not just clockwise. There's actually a vector that we can write with that. So let's start with that, okay? So if you point your fingers along the direction of R, your karate chop, you point your fingers in the direction of R, and you curl them down in the direction of F, and you stick your thumb out, your thumb should point into the page. So the direction of this is the negative k hat direction. So literally there is a torque vector that points down in or into the page, um, and, and there it is. Now, how do you calculate this? Okay. Well, what we've done in the past is we've found how much, there's two ways to do this. You can find how much of the force is perpendicular to the radius, or in this case, if I extend my line of force down, I can find out how much of the radius is perpendicular to that line of force, and we already know that is 6.43. Okay, that's your, that's your I component of the radius. We already found that right there. So our answer is 6.43 times negative 4, which is, uh, I get about negative 25.7, and it's in the k hat direction, and the units would be Newton meters. Okay, now, I want you guys to notice how we got the negative 25.4. Did we even use the 7.66? No. We took the I component of the radius times the J component of the force. This is different from dot product. In dot product, you multiply like directions. Well, when you do cross product, you multiply unlike directions because cross product is telling us how perpendicular two vectors are, okay? Now, um, I'm going to do another example in the next video here. That's going to be a three, couple three-dimensional vectors, but it's the same idea, and there's a, a process that you use to do cross-product if you have uh, three-dimensional vectors or, or beyond, okay? So um, I know this direction stuff can be a little confusing at times, but if you just practice it and, you know, ask for help when you need it, um, it will make more sense as you go. And it turns out that anything spinny, so torque, an angular velocity, an angular acceleration, an angular momentum, um, and all those things, it turns out you can represent all of them with a, an actual vector that has a direction, an actual straight arrow that has a direction. So I hope that uh, that video was enlightening, and thank you very much.